Hello and welcome back. If we meet for the first time, then my name's Ben. I am a registered children's nurse working in clinical education and I make these YouTube videos for all learners wanting to get the most out of their placement experiences because we all know that placements can be tough, but I hope to give you some insider tips and hints in order to overcome those barriers and make the most out of your learning experiences. If that sounds like fun, subscribe to this channel and we will see each other again soon. Regardless of whether you're new here or not, you will know the importance of gaining feedback from your placement areas and also completing your initial midpoint and final interviews. So in today's video, I hope to give you some hints and tips on overcoming some of the challenges that you can experience when trying to get feedback from the nurse that you've been working with or the other clinicians that you've been working with, as well as challenges around the times in which you need to complete your initial midpoint and final interviews, particularly when the ward gets busy. Now, the first thing I really want to say is you must aim for daily feedback. You know that when you come to completing your initial midpoint and final interviews, feedback is really important. Feedback at your initial interview, if it's not your first placement, will be gathered by going through previous placement learning experiences looking at the final interview from the last assessor and gathering some ideas in which areas you want to develop and further fine tune by going through this next placement learning experience. Remember that every day is different, therefore you will be coming across new opportunities each and every day, potentially working with new people as well. So these are great opportunities for you to gather even more feedback, even more insight into how you're doing in clinical practice. you potentially can write your own feedback. Now, it's always gonna be tempting to only write the best things, but if you truly are able to reflect on your day, through reflection, you'll be able to highlight the challenges in which you've encountered, and that could be the constructive element to your feedback. But you're also able to then pinpoint the stuff that happens that you are really proud about. That is really important when you come to writing your feedback, because potentially it could demonstrate that you're achieving your goals, but it's also just a really nice thing to be able to do as well. Highlight to the people that you're working with, the stuff that you're really proud about. So you could either write this feedback as a piece of feedback in your area in which the staff write feedback, but you could also complete it as a reflection. Now I know that you are meant to get feedback from the staff that you're working with, but when days get busy, it's really quite hard for you as a learner to try and either track somebody down to write the feedback, or there's this innate guilt that we have as learners in practice where we know that the nurses or the clinical teams have been so busy the last thing they're gonna to wanna to do is then complete a bit of feedback in your pad. However, not everybody is like that. There are people out there that will take the time to give you feedback, but if it's the day where it's just been a bit chaotic and mad, take it upon yourself, write that reflective piece, and then show it to the person that you've worked with and they can sign it off for you. They may then be urged to write a, a line or two underneath it to either agree with what you've said or maybe add to further elements in which you need to develop. This is feedback from that day. However, if you are feeling brave and you want to ask somebody for feedback but it has been busy and maybe you've not worked that closely with somebody it can be quite hard for that person to give you constructive and accurate feedback however an option could be for you to write a list out of things that you've come across things that you have achieved today potentially some of the goals that you've set yourself for that shift and you can help signpost that person to write that feedback almost give them a script in which they can write around but the important thing is that person working with you is still able to provide that feedback for you it's all about showing that you can take ownership of your learning experience. I've said it in previous videos that your assessment document is a reflection of you. So if somebody opens it and it's blank, what does that say about you? Now, the timing in which you ask for feedback can be quite critical. If you ask at the wrong time, sometimes it can feel that somebody just shrugs you off and says, yeah, we'll get to that later. So timing really is everything, but when is the right time to ask for feedback? An easy cop-out answer to that question would just be every single time that you have an opportunity. <laughs> now, I don't mean to continually ask the same thing, but find ways in which work for you to gather feedback. What I mean by that is if you ask somebody could you complete my assessment document at the end of the day and it never happens then clearly that way of asking somebody is not going to work however if you have found that maybe bartering with the staff works i.e i know it's been really busy today is there anything i can do in which i can give you some time so you can sit and write some feedback in my book they might then come back with something in which you are able to do to free up time for that person to spend 10 minutes or so writing some feedback another potential way that has worked for me and other students in the past is prompting 
that you've already started writing some of the feedback. You could tell them that you've inlaid a sticky note in your assessment document with some of the points in which you think you've achieved and some areas in which you still like some feedback on to develop further. Now, as an assessor or as somebody that's working with a student, if somebody had said that to me and I'm thinking, I don't even know where to start to give somebody feedback. It's been a good day, but I just don't know what to write. That helps me immensely by knowing that you've already outlined a few points in which I can give you feedback on. Now, going back to the timings of when to ask for feedback, clearly it has to be towards the end of the day. So at least three quarters of the day has passed. That's when you can start asking for that feedback from the staff that you're working with. Always think, if you don't ask for feedback, you are only gonna be the one that's disappointed at the end of the day or the next day when there is still nothing written about you and is anybody else going to take it upon themselves to pick your pad up and give you feedback without you asking for it potentially I would so please don't feel guilty by asking people to give you feedback more than once in a shift it might be the only way that you get that feedback it doesn't mean they don't care about you it doesn't mean they're not grateful for everything that you've done it just means that the care for that patient has clearly come first, which is good. So when it comes to your assessments, your interviews at midpoint and final, the same principles apply. You may need to continually ask for somebody to complete them. However, the best course of action is to pre-plan them. One option that could work is if your ward area has a diary in which they write the staff members on each shift in, that could be a place in which you write next to your name, you're planning to get your initial done today, your midpoint done today, or your final done today. As a nurse in charge, I will be responsible then for allocating a sensible and appropriate shift. So if I know that Ben, the student nurse, is planning to get his initial done today, I might then have an opportunity to help out the nurse that's working with Ben to free up a bit of time to get that interview done. So if your area that you're on has something like that, it could be a really good opportunity to highlight that you're planning to get something achieved today, an initial, a midpoint or a final. Plan in your dates ahead of time. However, also plan them a little bit earlier. You should always aim for your initial to be done in your first week. I probably wouldn't do it on your first day because you're not gonna get a good idea of what's achievable from that area. Plan it for the second, third day. Do not go beyond the first week. Your midpoint should always be kind of the midpoint of your placement, but earlier. It should always be the earlier side of the midpoint. And the same with your final. It should never really be done on your last day. Always aim to try and get it done the third, the second to last day. That way, if you need to delay it, then it's not gonna be going beyond the end of your placement. And if it's not getting done, you need to flag it to either your placement practice facilitators that are there responsible for students, or speak with your personal tutor, your university, your link lecturer, in order to help you get them done. Don't feel like you're dobbing anybody in because you're not, it is really important that you get these assessments done. Your midpoint is probably the most important because if you get it done early enough, you will therefore have enough time to work on some of the areas that are highlighted for development. But also, if you're doing really well, you've also got more time to then build in new and exciting things to work on. Now, if you are a second year or third year, then you will be expected to manage your patient workload to free up the time to work alongside your assessor, supervisor to complete your initial midpoint and final interviews. So if you do have a patient workload and your day appears to be quite flexible in the way that you have a few things to get done, but maybe you could condense them together, you can then hand your patient over to another nurse working on the ward. And it's always a great feeling to say you've got nothing for them to actually do, but just so they're aware that the patient needs somebody to be looking out for them, you can then go off with your assessor or supervisor and feel really proud that you've been able to make that happen. Don't just leave it up to the staff to be able to protect your time. As I've said previously, being control of your learning experiences. I also therefore mean that be in control of your time on the placements, demonstrating those all important time management skills that you can organise a good hour with somebody to sit down, write feedback or get these all important interviews done. I really hope there's been something in this video that you're willing to go back to placement and try. If you do, leave a comment down below and let me know what you've tried or if you have any other options and tips for students that have worked for you on how to free up some time to get assessments and feedback written, then leave it in the comments and share those ideas. As always, take care and stay safe.